So the Super Bowl was yesterday, um, and the Eagles won. I don't, I, football might be the sport I care the least about. It's a tie between that and baseball. Um, for baseball, there's an old joke I read. I think it was Bill Maher who said it, but it always made me laugh. He said, if baseball was any slower, it'd be farming. <laughs> I thought that was witty and true. Um, and I don't care about baseball or football, but uh, the Eagles won, which I actually was happy about because Tom Brady's a douche. Um, so that made me happy. But there was a an ad during the Super Bowl that got a lot of negative attention on Twitter. People were pretty pissed off about it. So it's a Dodge Ram ad, and they they used a voiceover of Martin Luther King Jr. So let's watch that, and then we'll discuss. If you want to be important, wonderful. If you want to be recognized, wonderful. If you want to be great, wonderful. But recognize that he who is greatest among you shall be your servant. That's a new definition of greatness. By giving that definition of greatness, it means that everybody can be great. You don't have to know about Plato and Aristotle to serve. You don't have to know the theory of relativity to serve. You don't have to know the second theory of thermodynamics in physics to serve. You only need a heart full of grace. Soul generated by love. Here's my question. How do you not know that this is going to cause a giant backlash and people are going to despise it. Like, this had to clear a boardroom. There was a room full of people sitting around and somebody was like, let's put Martin Luther King's voice in a Dodge Ram commercial. And everybody had to be like, yep, brilliant idea. This isn't going to be uh, cheap. This isn't going to be, uh, you know, really hacky. And that you're trying to use the voice of a legend and a hero and a civil rights icon uh, in order to try to sell a fucking pickup truck? None of you in the boardroom realized that. None of you was like, there wasn't one dude. There wasn't like some dude named Jeremy or Barbara sitting in the corner like, hey, guys, I think this is a terrible idea. No, like, I mean, this is probably the worst idea I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> Nobody was able to keep it real. No, but this shows you how disconnected um, the corporate class is from regular people. Because they thought, like, people are going to love this. They're going to go, wow, oh, thank you, Dodge Ram. Obviously, you care deeply about human rights. <laughs> and you care about the message of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Now, I want to show you, somebody took a different portion of the same Martin Luther King speech and uh, put it to, you know, that commercial. And look at this, because this is amazing. It's almost like Martin Luther King is warning in advance, hey, don't use my speech to do cheap materialism. So here, let me show you that. Uh, the presence of this instinct explains why we are so often taken by advertisers. You know, uh, those gentlemen of massive verbal persuasion, and they have a way of saying things to you that kind of gets you in the bind. In order to be a man of distinction, you must drink this whiskey. In order to make your neighbors envious, you must drive this type of car. In order to be lovely to love, you must wear this kind of uh, lipstick or this kind of perfume. And you know, before you know it, you're just buying that stuff. And I've got to drive this car because it's something about this car that makes my car a little better than my neighbor's car. And I am sad to say that the nation in which we live is the supreme culprit. And I'm going to continue to say it to America. That's unreal. That's from the same speech. It's from the same speech. How did they not know? How did they not know? Some people have a conspiracy that like, oh, well, maybe they wanted like just the commercial to be talked about, even if it's negative attention. 
But no, no company is looking for like, hey, let's have everybody fucking hate us. <laughs> no company's looking for that. They want, their goal is to try to pretend to, to be good people to get you to buy the product because you connect with them on some level that's like, oh, they care about my values. The same things I care about, they care about. But I think the thing that's really annoying people the most about this is that it's, it's, it's so obviously a cheap, hacky trick. Like, you don't give a fuck. You don't give a fuck. I don't know the history of Dodge and when it was created and stuff like that, but what? You're telling me if there's a giant market for white Southern segregationists for Dodge uh, Ram pickup trucks that Dodge would have stood on principles? No, we don't sell to racists. No, they, all they care about is profit in the bottom line because that's what they're designed to do. They're corporations. They'd be like, here, take as many as you want. Buy as many as you want, Southern segregationists. So, And then here's the other part of this that not many people are talking about, but it annoyed me. Like, you you know, in the original commercial, Martin Luther King is talking about, oh, serving, and they show, like, a picture of the troops and stuff. That's taking him out of context so massively that you, you've made the message mean the opposite of what it meant. Martin Luther King said the greatest purveyor of violence on the earth today is my own government. Because at the time they were doing Vietnam an offensive war waged against a country that didn't attack us, where we killed, like, over a million peasants, including women and children, in Vietnam. We napalmed and Agent Oranged innocent uh, villagers over there. This is what we learned in the Pentagon Papers. Martin Luther King said, the greatest purveyor of violence on Earth today is my own government. He, sa he said imperialism um, and materialism were two of the greatest evils. And I think poverty was the other one? Imperialism, materialism, poverty? Um, but he railed against U.S. empire and aggressive foreign policy. And you're showing pictures of troops as if Martin Luther King would be like, Yeah, send more troops to Iraq and Syria. Totally. Very. Okay. That is a super offensive accent of him. Okay. <laughs> I did like the, the proper British dude thing. I don't know why I did that. But anyway, he wouldn't say that. He, we know he wouldn't say that. If Martin Luther King was around today, he'd be campaigning for poor people's rights. We know, because that's what he did when he died. He fought, fought for civil rights. They got the Voting Rights Act and the Civil Rights Act passed. By the way, those were hammered by the Supreme Court recently, and multiple parts of it were struck down, which was terrible. But he would also be fighting, as he did back then, for unions, for a living wage, for universal health care, he said injustice in the healthcare system is the worst kind of injustice, or inequality in the healthcare system is the worst kind of injustice. So this is a guy who was really... He described himself as a democratic socialist. You're going to use the words of a democratic socialist for cheap propaganda and materialism and consumerism? Oh, and the other thing I should mention is, and I, to be clear, I don't know it, if this is true or not, or if it's just something I saw on Twitter and... It, I don't know about the source or whatever, but apparently, I don't think that he, they're allowed to use his speeches unless they get the go-ahead from the, his family. So they had to get permission, I think, from his family to do this, and obviously Dodge would pay the family, a, probably a colossal amount of money, um, to use Martin Luther King's speech. If that's the case, I, that's sad. It's just sad. Now, look, they have every right if they want to. They're his family, so they have the rights to whatever, his estate and all of his stuff. But, you know, so they have every right to sell his speech to Dodge or whoever if they want to use it for an advertisement. But it's just so obviously flies in the face of everything he was about. And it's just really cringy. And again, I'm not saying, like, what, the government should ban Dodge from being able to do it? No, of course not. They, they, they have the right to do it, and nothing was illegal here. It's just really fucking... Gross. I mean, that's all it is. And I would hope, I hope, honestly, that we're past the point of the patents on his stuff, and so they didn't have to pay the family to use it, and they just used it, because that would make me think a lot higher of the family, if the family didn't sell it. But they may have sold the rights to use this, and that's like, mm. I mean, look, you, they're, again, they have the right to make the decision, but it's just... It just seems wrong. <laughs> it just seems obviously wrong. So <sighs> there you have it. They're taking voices of heroes and trying to twist it to suit their own capitalistic purposes. Listen, I'm, I'm, I'm by no stretch of the imagination a hero. I'm just an asshole with a microphone 
who speaks his mind without a filter. But if when I die, if people start using my words to suit the purposes of militarism or to suit the purposes of corporatism or any of that, I hope all of you open up the bowels of, he of hell on their faces. Like, he wouldn't want this. Blah. That's what I want everybody to say. Because I would never want that.